on your marks. Absolutely, uh, Richo, and uh, this is the start of the athletics program, Birmingham 2022, and in the men's T53-54 marathon, we have the Australian, the 29-year-old from Kilmore in Victoria, in Jake Lappin, who's third wheel early on in this course, which we'll have a good uh, look at in a few moments' time, and as Richo mentioned, it would not be athletics without the iconic voice of uh, Dave Colbert beside me, and also uh, Curtis McGrath. As we just saw there from Mark, he was hit by a car in 2018 and became a paraplegic. And uh, they find parasport, and as you did, you have a new life, and it gives you something to focus on if you've been in that situation. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, having a disability can somewhat be a challenge um, in accepting who you are, and, and sport helps you um, find your identity, find a purpose, get some motivation. And obviously, you know, we want everyone to live a healthy and active lifestyle, and sports, you know, great output. For that and, and you know for people who acquire their disability it is a massive change but you know some some kids get out there with their, their disability and live with it for a long long time and then discover that there is the Paralympics there is a, a classification that's open up to them and you know this is the sort of section where they really will like the nice road through the park although those wheels on the Canadian Joshua Cassidy I think they're designed to make uh, his components hallucinate because they're exotic Mm. The flashing wheels of the Canadian. And this little this little part of the course at the bottom of this loop that uh, David's talking about, uh, they're, they're just going along Ribblesdale Road at the moment and they'll swing around. But this is not as tight, Curtis, as the finishing part of their course, but there's still some technical turns here. So David Weir, the champ from England, just on a little bit of a descent here and leads Josh Cassidy from Canada, Sean Frame from Scotland, and then John Boy Smith, who's just found a little bit of separation ahead uh, of uh, Simon Lawson and also Jake Lappin, who are racing beside each other at the moment. But that must be a nice feeling just momentarily for Weir as he descends so they've just gone through 12K, 12K yeah. yeah, and uh, at 10K he was alongside Sean Frame from Scotland, as we saw, and then it was Smith and Lawson from England with Jake Lapp, and they were 27 seconds behind the leaders. They've just gone up another really big climb, and while we're in the ad break, you saw how it was probably more severe than the first one we saw, Curtis, and you could see how quickly they came down the other side. So, you know, they've got to do this bit twice, and... You know, Weir's an experienced campaigner. He's got those big guns, so there's there's a lot to to push, but that's going to test them out the second time they come around. And he's just dispensed with frame for, for now. And you can see that gap. That's a big gap. So Weir would be pretty pleased with his situation at the moment. Yeah, exactly. It, it is a long hill, that, that one we just saw. It was quite... Um, made them test them all the way up and, and coming back down they'll quite enjoy that but as i said you can't, don't want to go too hard it's only a uh, 30 second gap between that sort of secondary chase group and and having that opportunity to to come back there's still a lot of time there
So they were lamping for rabbits, and he was shot by mistake. And uh, as we mentioned, the road to some of these things for, for a lot of these athletes is so different from the athletes that are born with their disability, so they're used to it, to athletes who have life-changing moments like you did, Curtis. Um, and, you know, that often takes a long time to mentally get your head around when you've lived a life and then all of a sudden you have to live another life. But that's one of the great things about Paralympic sport, that you get all this amalgam of all of those different people. And at the moment, they're all just the same in a chair pushing to try and win a medal for their, their nation. And uh, he's got a good margin over John Boy Smith and Sean Frame. So we won this race in 2014 in Glasgow and uh, has really put himself in the mix here. So some good Australian support out on the course. People are starting to come out. They must be late risers, I have to say, in Birmingham because we've gone through a lot of these local suburbs. These houses here, Maddie, Maddie and Curtis, wouldn't you pop your head out the front door to have a look at the major championship that's going past your front door? Well, I was very surprised <laughs> to see uh, one man just wander past and have a look at the athletes and not even give them a second glance really, and just keep walking. now and he had Josh Cassidy from uh, Canada chasing him early and it's now John Boy Smith who has been uh, really trying to hunt him down for the last 25 minutes or so. Sean Frame was certainly showing uh, some speed early but uh, John Boy Smith is the main danger to David Weir but uh, the veteran's looking strong Dave Colbert and in fact I think he's increased his margin. He has so they just recently went through the halfway mark and now they're on some of these climbs through the parkland and he had 46 seconds at halfway over Smith and then frame was a minute 37. Jake Lappin the Australian in this event was a minute 38 behind at uh, 15k and then 229 behind at 20 so and then that gap went out to 250 so sadly for Jake whose main event at well, the 1500 but he, he's not going in the right direction and this man won the 1500 of course in Glasgow back in 2014 where he beat Cassidy so they've had a, a good uh, relationship over many years as competitors and uh, you can just see that uh, we are taking on some fluid and uh, leaving most of it on the footpath. There's probably a few athletes that are very happy the cameras have disappeared uh, from that uh, village. But that was a really good uh, sneak peek at what goes on. But I must say, boys, um, you've got to conserve your energy for uh, these events. But I, I would imagine it'd be pretty tiring just sitting around doing nothing. So it's good they've got a bit of activity in there, DC. Well, you've got to be an expert at doing nothing, actually, when you're an athlete. At a I was always on towards the end. I'm not sure, Curtis, you had a pretty big program throughout your, your Paralympics. But you've got to be really good at doing nothing. For me, it was Scrabble and playing 500. So it's interesting with the, the, the marathon runners. They were the best 500 players. So the likes of Kieran McCann and Steve Monaghetti and Sean Quilty and um, Chris Wardlaw, who was their coach, we were mad 500 players. So doing nothing, really important. I don't know what your go-to was, Curtis, but lying on your bed looking at the ceiling was one of your best skills when you're in the Athletes' Village. Yeah, I, I must say I've had, I've had two goes at doing nothing. You know, they do a lot in the Army, you know, hurry up and wait. 
is pretty much the main catchphrase. But as an athlete, you know, you have to be very um, aware about what you're doing in your, your, your downtime, your recovery for getting back out there and doing things, you know, after your events. And there's a lot of, you know, physio. We saw Ariane Timmis there on the, the physio bed, but, you know, recovery and the, and the ice bars and nutrition and the dining, I think, establishments are generally somewhat of the, the main attraction at the Paralympic and Olympic Games. And I would imagine it would be the same in the Commonwealth Games yeah. as well. It's also a very dangerous spot. Is this young man on the side of the road just stretching his legs yes. there as he tries to keep up? It's actually really dangerous, the meal hall, because it is easy to... to Particularly if you're on not as bad at the Commonwealth Games, it's a it's an 11 day event. You're probably in the village for five days beforehand. The the Olympics and Paralympics are longer stretch, so you can stack on some kilograms if you get stuck into the ice cream. That's for sure. I used to have a diet of air and lettuce. That was the t- I was like a jockey, Matty. I had struggle with the weight, and you had to carry it through the air. So I <laughs> hated the meal hall because there was all this stuff that you couldn't do and. There's a couple of people just walking the woofer on a Saturday morning in Birmingham on the right-hand side as the world's best wheelchair athletes from the Commonwealth are in action. And I don't even think they gave a second look as they go past. So this is towards the end of this uh, this second 18-kilometre lap. And then as we talked about, they go into the main city of... Birmingham and there's uh, plenty of sights that we'll see uh, along the way and that's the great thing about the uh, we saw terrific crowds at the triathlon on day one but particularly the marathons day was we actually get to take in the city and that's what these events are all about we get a real flavor of the town of uh, Birmingham uh, the Victoria Square area is where this marathon will finish including the town hall right in front of the town hall that opened in 18. 18- 34 in Victoria Square. It's a hall famous for its pipe organ with 6,000 pipes, so that makes a fair bit of noise. Um, And, of course, next to the Grand Central train station as well, right in the middle of Birmingham, and it'll take in the suburb of Brookfields before we get right into the heart of the town. Simon Lawson, we just saw there from Great Britain, through 30 kilometres, and David Weir, He's got almost a stranglehold on this at 30k. It's um, it's not the sort of course in the position where he is now that you're going to give up a lot of time. So a minute 30 is a big margin over John Boy Smith. Frame's just gone through at 3.59. That's four minutes. That's a huge margin. And Curtis, he doesn't look like he's going backwards, David Weir. He's, he's a strong competitor. He's got lots of experience. The eight-time London Marathon winner. Five-time Paralympian, six gold medals, gold medal in the 1,500 metres back in his earlier days as a speedster on the track, but he's still pushing very strongly, as is Matty De Rosario. So something may be amiss here because he just let out a uh, a little contribution a to the swear tire. jar, I and he I think he's a got a puncture. On the left-hand side, yep. Oh, goodness me. So we have some drama here. There's a puncture in the left wheel, and you could see his reaction, and he's shaking his head, so... This is an unexpected turn of events, Curtis. What's happening? Yeah, so the the rule is that he himself has to fix that flat if he wants to to rectify it, but uh, he can't get any outside assistance, so he's probably going to push it all the way. It's going to be hard work. So it's not like the Tour de France where you have the neutral spares rock up in the the motorbike or the service vehicle travelling behind and the technician jumps out. And, uh, you know, we've seen this on a number of occasions where... You know, you've got to push. Sometimes they, it's a slow flat, but this, you know, obviously was just an instantaneous pop, and it's not something that happens that often, I have to say. But and also uh, having to control your emotion in this part. He's a minute and a half up on John Boy Smith at the moment, but the, these are dramatic scenes. He's still got a long way to go too, so, you know, he's getting towards the 35-kilometre mark. It's, you know, it's not the sort of push you can continue doing, and he knows that, and... You know, there's no sign of a spare, so this might be race over for the veteran David Weir. So, a See, remarkable I put the commentator's moment. curse on him, haven't I? He said he looked great, he looked strong. Yeah. It didn't look like he was coming back to the field. But that's what I'm here for, because England are the main rivals, so <laughs> I'm going to continue that. That's no, a bit facetious. You don't like to see it, because he's, a, he's had such a great career. He's been, you know, he's a superstar in, in the UK. Tony Gray Thompson is is their most famous wheelchair athlete, Dame and uh, 
famous name in British sport. And there's John Boy John Smith, Boy. who's just screamed past, says a few words of uh, encouragement. He's going to continue on. He's got a big margin, 3.59, but it's hard to imagine. Smith's just shaking his head. What, what drama. It is, it's dramatic and it's terribly sad to watch, isn't it, as... David Weir, who had just put so much effort into 35 kilometres and was looking for a famous Commonwealth Games gold medal. He was going so well and unfortunately, a puncture in that left tyre and it's hard to watch. He's still going though. Like, it is uh, a commendable effort to, to push on. It is a lot harder when one side of your chair is, is flat because of the, the drag in which that produces. So that left arm of his will just be absolutely knackered. Probably would be able to push through if it was a central, the, cent the, the front wheel, um, just because of the, the balance. But um, yeah, that left side would be hard. Just trying, my, my memory sometimes, you know, doesn't work quite as well as I would like, but I recall Kurt Fernley having a flat. I'm thinking Rio, but I'm just going to busily Google because he's uh, had to push in some difficult circumstances over the years, but uh, it's still too far to go for, mm. for David Weir to, to, I think, to even reach the podium. Four minutes 48, Lawson was behind in fourth place. Cassidy, 5.18. This is a 30k, and we still don't have a time for Jake Lappin at that, but they haven't reached the 35k mark yet. So this is a real opportunity for John Boy Smith from England, and it could be a golden opportunity as we take a break. So here's the leader, John Smith. We talked to, um, before the break about Kurt Fernley. If it was an exam, I would have got half a point because I had the you were name close. right. You were close. Well, 12 years out. So th is that close? Don't think so. 2004. the athlete right, though. So 2004 it was that Kurt Fernley um, burst his tyre with... And here's the map again as we get to this really um, technical part where there's a lot of twists and turns in the final 6.2 kilometres of the city centre loop before they get to the finish line at Smithfield. So, yeah, it was 2004 in Athens that uh, Kurt Fernley at the Paralympics uh, blew a tyre with five kilometres to go. He had enough of a lead that he was able to push on and still get the gold medal. So I, I don't disagree with Richo, um, Curtis. I think when you've got technical equipment like this, that some things can go wrong, that you should have the opportunity to have a, the neutral spare. I, I don't mind the idea of having to change it yourself. I think that's probably not a bad one. But uh, from no fault of his own, um, you're, you're out of the race. It's pretty hard. Yeah, it's tough. It's, it was hard to watch. You know, you, you saw the anguish on his face and, and the disappointment. And, and even and John Boy Smith was, was a bit sort of confused as well. He, Tried to yell out to him, but you know he's going past at lightning speed compared to Dave Weir there. It's obviously uh, a disappointing race for Dave. And as we have a look at John Boy Smith uh, heading now through into the city of Birmingham for the final six or seven kilometres, uh, Kurt Fernley, who we've just spoken about, he had a little issue at a tight turn at the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games four years ago. So these turns can be quite tight, quite precarious, and this is quite technical, the last five or six Ks, Curtis. Yeah, it all depends on how close that the, the fences are as well on the hairpin turns that we'll see later on. Um, we even saw one of the chase cars with the, the camera in it having a bit of trouble getting around there, but we've got motorbikes today, so shouldn't be too bad. It's pretty tight there, so we, we might see some difficulty, but I'm sure 
Um, these boys have done it all before. And to his credit, David Weir just pushes on there. And look at that margin now, 4 minutes 39. But uh, well, he's dropped 4 minutes, hasn't yeah, he, it's in, remarkable. in a K. So um, through 30K, Jake Lappin was in 6th spot, um, 10 minutes and 18 seconds behind. We don't yet have a split for him at 35K. As we've got those that top five, as you can see on the screen, with Smith followed by Frame and Lawson. England, Scotland and England. As we uh, get towards the, the Central Station, New Street Station, imaginatively titled after New Street. Yes, indeed. And the central hub for many years in the West Midlands. And the library, they'll be passing the, uh, the library on the left-hand side of the city of Birmingham. And there is Victoria Square right in the middle. So that's where the finish line is. It's a great shot of the, the city of Birmingham, Victoria Square with the river. That's the famous statue that, uh, well, would I say famous, Curtis, or infamous? Probably the latter. Uh, yes. the it's not called, it's the river's its official name. What's its yeah. unofficial name? Well, it, it, it's a lady who is uh, sitting in a pool, which is technically meant to be a river, and it's colloquially known in uh, Birmingham as the floozy in a jacuzzi. Okay, I like it. So we'll get a good uh, shot of that statue as the Athletes head towards the finish line. Well, so John Boy Smith here unexpectedly finding himself in front and after finishing second behind Kurt Fernley on the Gold Coast is uh, marching towards a victory, you would think. Well, so this is the Canadian, I think, who's uh, pushing really strongly. Yet to reach 40K, which is a, a big marker in the marathon because you know then that... You know, you've you've broken, well and truly broken the back, 42.195. So to my reckoning, and Curtis, uh, you're watching the map as closely as uh, myself. Uh, this is at the sand pits well, have lane. A look here. So and have the, a look at this U-turn. Yeah. So dramatic the way that it takes a lot of effort just to get into the right direction. That's really severe for, for all the athletes, the able bodies. That deep into the race, that close to the finish line, a U-turn like that is really punishing. And Kurt have mentioned that before. If you, you know, the, the, the little steering mechanisms are a toucher. It's not a steering wheel that don't goes, you know, around corners as vicious as that. We talked about backstories. So this man has a remarkable backstory the first Romani Paralympian and now through some of these little back streets of the CBD of Birmingham and very shortly he's going to have the delight to turn into Victoria Square he'll have a couple of relatively tricky right handers and then head up towards the town hall of Birmingham for what will be a famous Commonwealth Games gold medal particularly for the English and John Boy Smith he's had a good career 10th in Tokyo, second behind Kurt Fernley on the Gold Coast, second in the New York Marathon. But there's been no wins, nope. and that's about to change today. So this is uh, his greatest moment. To his last corner, to be honest. I think he's just coming. And again, another clock, like this, yeah. and there's another one, there's, and then there's another one, and then there's another one. And you can see from the, you know, that's a steep climb within you know, possibly a couple of hundred metres from the finish line. He's got this curve and he can't be too far away, but that's another punishing little pinch. So he's got the big buildings of the left and then, of course, the finish line in Victoria Square. So this is the feeling that Dave was talking about. He can literally see the coloured finish line now. And yeah, with 200, 200 metres to, go. to but, go. Like, he's cooked going up these hills. You know, he's got not much left and he's had a good look around to think, you know, thankfully, there's no one here because... Bring on the finish line, <laughs> please. <laughs> well, this is his greatest sporting moment and greatest moment of his life. John Boy Smith to the finish line in Birmingham. It's another gold medal for England. An unexpected gold for him, presented with that golden opportunity, passing David Weir. And the winner of the men's... T5354 is John Boy Smith from England. That was a strong push, and we know the the disaster that uh, David Weir has suffered with that flat tyre, but he is spent, and that time of 141 is slow. That's a tough course. 
you know, his, his lifetime best is 129. His season's best is 131. He's 10 minutes away from that. And you can see he, he couldn't push another metre. He's done. Yeah, it, it, those hills just came out of nowhere. You know, you come around a corner and you, you see it. And uh, would have made them work all the way to the finish line, as we saw there. And I just wanted to point out, um, David Weir is still in fifth place, and Jake Lapland's j still behind him. Maybe da Jake uh, also had a, a technical issue yeah, maybe. back then as well, and is yep. pushing on hard. He's got that climb, that vicious climb. This one here. What's he got? Frames better. Up the rise. Maybe he just had a little rest knowing that this was... Maybe he'd done the reconnaissance, and now he shoots clear. Says no entry. They're ignoring that. Up to the last last bend, and I wanted to point out that uh, uh, Sean Frame is a T54, and Simon Lawson is T53, yeah. so that might be the difference here, as we can see. And maybe that climb just broke the heart of uh, Lawson as Frame kicked again, and then comes around this corner. He's about to see the sign with 200 metres to go. That'll be a relief for him. Has... Lawson got anything left? I don't think he has. And Sean Frame is going to surge away and get the silver medal for Scotland. Well, that was an entertaining finish. Here he comes, Sean Frame. So the time of our winner, 1.41.15. It's going to be about four and a half minutes later into second as Sean Frame now powers on. Spurred on by Simon Lawson, passing him earlier. Comes through for the silver medal, and it's going to be a gold and a bronze to the home nation as Simon Lawson is going to come through. The veteran himself at 41 years of age with the bronze.